Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery, and today we're going to be talking about all of the books that I ended up reading in June. Baby, baby. In total, last month in June, I ended up reading 19 books. I read some duds, honestly, and I read some all-time favorites, so... Let, let's talk about them. As usual, we're going to be talking about these books from my least favorite to my favorite. If you would like to know my in-depth thoughts on every single book that I read this month, you can join my channel, you can be a channel member, and I talk in real time about every single book that I read. So I've already talked about all these books at length for uh, the vlogs on my channel, a weekly vlog for my members only. So if you'd like to know my in-depth thoughts on some of these books, be sure to click the join button on my channel page. My least favorite book of the month was most definitely Misadventures of a Backup Bride by Shayla Black. This is book number two, a part of the Misadventures series. This series does not correlate with one another. They're just a bunch of books written by romance authors that have happen to have the word Misadventures in that title. And so this is technically number two in the series, but does not correlate with the other books at all. So our hero in this story, his name is Carson, and he owns this company that was handed down to him by his very estranged father. But in order to keep this company afloat and running, he needs a loan from a big business company. And so he ends up meeting the CEO of some other company, I don't know the name of, um, but the guy of that company is like, okay, I'll give you this money to help your business if you marry my daughter. And so he agrees to this, he proposes to her, whatever, they've been engaged for a little bit, and he realizes he does not like her at all. <laughs> like, they have nothing in common. Like, he likes her as a person, but she's quite young, I think she's like 21 and he's 30, and they have zero in common, nothing in common. And so he's like, I am going to be miserable my entire life. I don't love this woman. I don't see myself loving this woman. I gotta get out of this situation. And so he goes to her dad and is like, hey, I don't think I can marry your daughter. Um, don't you want your daughter to fall in love, find love? And he's like, what? And um, Carson on the spot comes up with an excuse that he can't marry his daughter because he's in love with somebody else. And the dad is like, well, who is it? I want to see this person and know this is legit um and so he's like uh okay no problem i'll i'll go call her and um have her come and meet you so he's not actually in love with somebody <laughs> and so um when he was at a party like a couple months ago he ended up meeting this actress who is very interested in and so he calls her up and is like i will hire you to pretend to be the woman i'm in love with and she's like bet a bunch of money you're gonna pay me for this great but they agree like on the phone before they meet each other like we're obviously gonna have to kiss and like pretend to be in love and all that. That's okay. It's not going farther than that. They're like, okay, cool. And right when they meet each other in person again, let's just say clothes come off very quickly. <laughs> I did not like this book. I gave it two stars. So, um, <laughs> this book had quite a spotlight in my weekly reading vlogs for my channel members because man, was I very pissed off by this book. I'm just gonna talk about the main one because I had many issues with this book, but the main one was the hero. I did not like him at all. As some of you may or may not know, I have a gluten intolerance. I can't eat gluten. I am on a strict diet. I have been since I was seven, okay? And there are many other people who have autoimmune disorders or have chronic illnesses to where they have to be on a special diet or just in general, if you want to better your health, if you want to, um, I don't know, try a different lifestyle out. Like people go on diets for different things. Like it doesn't necessarily mean if you're on a diet, you're trying to lose weight all the time. I feel like there are a lot of people out there who hate on others who are on a diet, whether it be for medical reasons, personal reasons, health reasons, whatever the case. And so our hero in here, he made me so mad. So our hero in here, she's an actress and she's like, I have to watch my weight a little bit because directors and people who are hiring me have told me in the past, like, I need to watch my weight, which by the way is horrible for the act. Like I hate that obviously. I hate that people judge somebody not based on their talent, but because of the way that they look. I hate that obviously. The way that the hero went about like reacting to this, I did not like. Whenever they're at a meal, she basically says that, hey, I'm um, having this kind of goal for my calorie that I'd really like to get under. Also, sorry, this book also has like a trigger warning for calorie counting, which kind of triggered me. I used to be, I used to calorie count in a very unhealthy way a couple years ago and it kind of triggered me a little bit, even though I'm not doing it anymore. I previously did and so please watch out for that if calorie counting triggers you at all because she talks about it somewhat in this book. So whenever the characters are at dinner, um, every single time they're at dinner, the heroine orders something that she would like um, based on her diet and her diet preferences and the hero is basically like, 
no, you're gonna eat what I tell you to eat and you're not gonna leave the table until you eat all of it. And at that point, he didn't know why she was ordering what she was ordering. And I felt like he was just being, I can't say the bad word, but it starts with an A. He was being a, you know, a donkey. It just, it pissed me off. I can't stand men who do that. I cannot, I do not find it romantic in any sense of the word at all. You ordering food for a woman and forcing her to eat it. Let a woman order whatever the heck she wants for dinner. If your opinion is different than mine, totally get it, totally understand. But like me, I can't stand that. I've been on a very specific diet my, almost my entire life. And I hate when people dismiss what I order or what I eat. I can't stand it. And this just, I guess, like triggered me in that. And he did not care that the heroine kept saying like, no, I'm going to stick to what I have to eat, to what I want to eat. And he just was like, no, you're gonna eat whatever the heck I tell you to eat. Like, it made me so upset. Anyway, there's, there's also a bunch of other things that made me really mad about this book. I'm not gonna talk about it now because I've already talked about it for quite a while. <laughs> Next on the list, we have Clipped Wings by Helena Hunting. Now, I previously had not heard anybody talk about this book. I just watched Brie from In Love and Words, her video, her wrap up for June, and I realized she read this book as well, kind of like at the same time as me. Had no idea. But before that point, I didn't hear about anybody talking about this book. So I picked it up because it's a Helena Hunting and it was available on Libby to listen to. I, I should not have picked it up. <laughs> well, I'll tell you the summary first. So basically this is about Hayden, Hayden and Tenley, yes, Hayden and Tenley. And Hayden works at a tattoo shop and Tenley works at the bookshop that is across the street. They've always had like glancing looks at each other and thought the other one was really cute, attractive and everything. And then Hayden finally gets up the nerve to like ask her out and Tenley wants to get a tattoo done by him. It's very new adult, very new adult. A kind of new adult I don't enjoy reading. There is new adult that I do enjoy reading. Obviously some of my favorite books are, do fall in that genre, but this was like, new adult to the grotesque amount that I don't think is my jam. There are trigger warnings in here for grief, death of a loved one, and previous drug use. So both of these characters have pretty dark pasts. I'm not going to talk about them because you'll learn about them when you read the book if you choose to read the book. My main gripe about this book is that Hayden is not my kind of hero. He is super possessive and alpha to a point where I was cringing while listening to this. Like, I could not stand it. I can't stand the heroes that, um, Whenever a girl is talking, the girl that they like is talking to another guy, not in a romantic sense at all, just like talking to another person that just happens to be male, they get super possessive and they drag, in this instance, in this book, he literally dragged her away and started making out with her and said, you're mine, you're mine. Like, dude, chill out. I also can't stand books where the heroine doesn't realize how, um, attractive she is to guys kind of like not like essentially romance books where every single male character that you meet in the book that's not even the hero even the hero included every single guy in the book likes her every single guy likes her like how is that even possible like and she doesn't realize it at all like not at all like what do you mean the cop liked me that pulled me over like i just i can't stand heroines who are naive in that way. Also the lying, they were lying to one another. I, I can't stand when the characters lie, for, lie to each other for no apparent reason. When there's a reason behind it, I totally get it. But if you are in love with somebody and you're keeping this huge secret from them, like, I don't get it. <laughs> we then have Stolen Goblin Bride by Emma Hamm. I decided to pick this up on a whim one day because I really love Emma Hamm's romance books. This is a uh, the prequel book to her, one of her fantasy romance series. This is a novella. I don't know, the cover really intrigued me and I was like, what the heck? It's like under, oh, it's just about 100 pages. And I was like, you know what? I love Emma Hamm. I haven't read one of her books in a while. I'll pick this one up. I don't know if I'm gonna like the rest of this series, if this is the way it's gonna go. This is the prelude kind of book to the, I don't remember, but it's like Goblin King something. So the beginning of like that series is like a bunch of books following the same couple, one of which is a human girl and her love interest is a Goblin King or whatever. And so the heroine of like the main book in the series, uh, her sister, was stolen by goblins and so she goes out to find them. So this novella is about her sister being stolen by goblins. This just did not work for me. Um, the hero on the cover doesn't look like what the hero looks like at all. Apparently goblins are kind of like chimera if you think about it. They're like part animal and so he's supposed to look like a rat and so that is not a rat. <laughs> Um, so yeah, also the summary of the book written on Goodreads is like the hero, the heroine 
ends up stealing an object of his and that's how they take her like they take her to get retribution for stealing an item and that's not what happened at all um he sells her an item and apparently when you pay a goblin you have to take them as a bri like the, the goblins have to take you as a bride like that was not the summary at all i was also very confused by the age of these characters because like at the beginning of the book the heroine like describes the goblin that she eventually has a romantic relationship with as a boy and i'm like oh are they like 12 or 13 or something like young and then like they go on to get married and and stuff like that and i'm like well the the, the author never described how old they are i assumed that this was maybe gonna jump time because you said he was a boy and he was acting like a boy and like it just really confused me um so i don't know if i would i don't know if i want to read the rest of the series if this is what it's going to be like there was also no steam in this at all so um if you want a romance without steam maybe check this one out if you want to get into fantasy romance i then have my buddy read for the month which was if ever i should love you by kathy maxwell i buddy read this with jen from the book refuge and i was really excited to read this because i've read a few kathy maxwell's in the past and i have a few of her books in physical form um and she has beautiful 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 step backs some of my favorite step backs ever and so I've been wanting to love one of her books. Like I have been, but unfortunately none of her books have gotten over three stars from me. This is another case of a three star, unfortunately. So this is the first book in the Spinster Heiress series. So each book is about a spinster who was also an heiress, but they're spinsters for many reasons. The reason why our heroine in this book is a spinster is because uh, people think that her mother cheated on her dad because she doesn't look like her dad at all. It's a scandal, obviously, in historical romances. It's gonna get around. There's a huge trigger warning in here for previous sexual assault and alcoholism. Um, so our heroine in here, um, she was sexually assaulted about a, I think like a year ago or a year or two ago, or a couple, I don't remember the timeline. <laughs> um, but our heroine here ended up kind of like rescuing her afterward, after the whole situation, and it kind of ruined his military career because of it. And so he's kind of always blamed this woman for his military career going down the garbage chute, basically. And so it's years later and they end up coming across each other because the hero just inherited a title. And he comes to her father and is like, I want to marry your daughter. Um, I think he just wants to have a wife. Um, and Leone, the heroine, is there for the picking, there for the taking. Um, but he doesn't realize what he's in for when he marries her. Ever since she was sexually assaulted, she has gone to alcohol to help her with her horrible thoughts that she has. And so she has been drinking for quite a while and has not been able to stop. I didn't necessarily like this book because of the representation of alcoholism and the reaction to somebody who is an alcoholic. First of all, like Jen talked about um, in one of her wrap up videos, and we talked about this together, like her methods for um, kind of getting over being an alcoholic or not being an alcoholic anymore weren't really that realistic. Although I did like her methods on how she got better and healthier. It was just a too short of amount of time to get over that big of an addiction for that long. Also, I really hated the hero's um reaction to her being an alcoholic i hated it if you realize somebody that you love is going through it like a sickness a disease this is a disease that people have like his reaction was horrible like for example one night they're staying at an inn and she goes downstairs to use the restroom and while she's trying to find the restroom she comes across a bo bottle of alcohol on the table on the counter and decides to take a sip. One of the guys at the bar who was gawking at her earlier um, decides to try to force himself on her. The hero luckily comes downstairs in time to like rescue her and stuff. But like afterwards he blamed her. He like blamed her for what happened because of course she had to have a sip of alcohol. Like you're the reason why you almost got sexually assaulted. And like that made me mad, but that wasn't a couple, that was also, there was also a few reasons. Like the only way that he supported her was to take alcohol out of the house and not live in the house anymore. He went to sleep in the barn instead of comfort her or help her in any other way. He just wanted to leave and not look at her at all because he was so disgusted by her. And like, no. <laughs> it had some redeeming qualities and some facts. I. I really liked the heroine's growth and then the hero's family and how they took her in with open arms. I really liked that and everything, but there's just a bunch of lot there's just a bunch of lying and things I did not like that that I just had to give it three stars. Man, I've been talking for quite a while. I'm gonna try and speed speed this up. Um I get pretty heated and talk a lot. 
<laughs> about books I don't like. Okay, so I next read His Mimosa by Jamie Schlosser. 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 I don't know how to pronounce her name. Schlosser. There you go. Um, I listened to this on the Reading Romance podcast. This is basically a very short romance between a hero who doesn't believe in love or marriage and he is in Las Vegas for his brother's bachelor party. One morning he's very hungover and decides to go to one of the um, open bar cafes that's open really early in the morning. Um, specifically for people who have hangovers and there he meets a waitress there and they have a one night stand and she finally has him see what love is and so I just gave this three stars it was okay nothing special about it I picked this up because I really loved another Jamie Schlosser book that I will talk about later in this video but I don't really recommend this one if you're wanting to get into her work it just it was okay I then read Most Eligible Billionaire by Annika Martin this book was really funny at some points but overall it's just a three star for me so this is about our heroine um whose name is vicky vicky um and her old neighbor friend ends up bestowing her dog named smuckers to her when she passed away so she ends up getting the dog like in her will so she goes to the reading of the will with the dog and she realizes that this woman was actually like the 51% shareholder of this multi-billion dollar company in New York. Um, and she ends up like in her will giving this 51% of this company to her dog. <laughs> and so this dog who's owned by Vicky now owns 51% of this company. And so technically like since Vicky owns the dog, and uh, she kind of owns like 51% of this company. <laughs> and so the hero of this book is actually the da the son of the woman who just died. And so he is furious. He's furious that a dog owns 51% of this company. So he's trying his very best to not have that happen. And one way he might do that is to pretend to like the heroine romantically so that he can convince her to give her him the 51%. Um, that will obviously backfire when he starts realizing that he actually might love this woman um, and he's not faking it at all. There's obviously going to be future conflict about that if you couldn't tell. <laughs> I ended up giving this one just three stars. Um, I really liked the concept of it, very cool, but I feel like there were so many different elements in this book that it was very, very, very busy. Um, my heroine in here has a secret identity. There's the whole Smuckers thing. There's a billion dollar company. She has her own side business. Like it's just a, a bunch of things happening in this one book and I felt like it was too much and I feel like it just needed to be narrowed down some. I then read One Dance with the Duke by Tessa Dare. This is the first book in the Stud Club series. So this is about our hero who is a duke and he's very notoriously known for picking one girl to dance with at a ball and then leaves and people think that when he leaves that means he's not gonna ask that girl to marry him and so at the beginning of this book our heroine just realized that her brother is kind of like in debt to this duke and so instead of him like waiting to go ask somebody to dance she like asks him to dance and pulls him onto the dance floor and he's just like who is this woman what is going on um and so she basically like tells him what kind of situation that she's in long story short by some way they end up getting in a marriage of convenience there's a lot of other things going on in this book that i don't really want to talk about because i feel like it could be like kind of like spoiler but there is like a murder mystery plot thing going on um that was I don't know why I was in this <laughs> um like it kind of furthered on the plot but it kind of didn't I don't I don't know this one is not my favorite Tessa Dare book and I honestly feel like there's way better Tessa Dare books that you could read um but I do want to read the rest of the series so I can say that I read all of Tessa Dare's books so I just gave this one three stars it was Okay. I then read Twas the Night Before No Poison Day by Ruby Dixon. This is just a very short um, book in the Ice Home series. This is number 10.5 and it's just a short little 18 page novella about Christmas time in the Ice Home camp. It was short. It was sweet. I just ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I then read Blood Truth by J.R. Ward. This is book number four, a part of the Black Dagger Legacy series, which is the spinoff to the Black Dagger Brotherhood. Since this is in the middle of a very long series, because I do consider the main series to be a part of this, so it's like over 20 books long at this point, I don't really want to go into too much detail. This series is about a um, society of vampires that live on earth with humans but humans don't know that they exist so it's a secret society of vampires um there's a king of the vampires and then there is the black dagger brotherhood which is a group of guys or people where uh they are tasked to protect the vampire race from these things called um what are they called slayers right slayers they're called slayers which they're basically like zombies you know um and so they kill zombies and they're trying to just like 
get on through their lives, live their vampire lives, and deal with all the drama that is being a vampire in the Black Decker Brotherhood. And so our main character here, his name is Boone. He is one of the trainees who's trained to possibly be a Black Dagger brother later on in life, who knows? He ends up coming across a woman named Helene, Helene, um, who is also a vampire. And she ends up witnessing her sister being murdered a couple months ago or a year ago. And she's still trying to find the killer. And so um, Boone ends up teaming with Butch, who is a part of the Black Dagger Brotherhood to try and find this killer. And through all of this, Boone ends up falling in love with um, Helene. I really like this one because I love J.R. Ward and I love her world and I love this writing style, um, but this was not my favorite in the series. There's also a trigger warning in here for Panic Attack, Death of a Loved One, and Grief. I just wasn't a fan of the murder mystery plotline. I'm never really a fan of a murder mystery plotline, like ever really, um, so that just didn't float my boat. Also the couple in here really just gave me the same vibes and like um, reaction to each other as the Couple in the Savior by J.R. Ward, which is the book that was published previous to this one, because I've been reading these all in publication order. And so I read The Savior before this one last month, and it was my, my favorite book of the month. I loved it. But this romance was so similar to theirs, except like one of them's not human. But like the way that they like interacted with one another and how fast they fell for one another was really similar to the previous book. So I don't know, I couldn't give it over four stars. So I just gave it a 3.75. I then read Beauty and the Blacksmith by Tessa Dare. This is book number 3.5, a part of the Spindle Cove series. I really enjoy this one. So this is about Diana Highwood, which you, who you've met in the previous books. I love her. She is the girl who um, has had many asthma attacks um, because she has asthma. Um, and so her mother, if you've read about her mother, her mother is always pushing her to find an advantageous match to find a rich husband in Spindle Cove, but she can't help but fall for and has been longing for the blacksmith of this town for years. And so she'll come up with any excuse to break a necklace or any kind of jewelry to have him go fix it for her. And he may or may not also like her. I thought this was just like so cute and sweet and like one of my favorite historical romance novellas. Um, I wish they had their full length novel, like a full length novel about them. I wish we got like their like backstory and like read about them first noticing each other and falling for one another because I felt like that would be so cute if that was in a full length book. But but unfortunately we didn't get that. So I'll just take what I can get. <laughs> so I just ended up giving this one a four to five stars. I then surprisingly really liked Misadventures of the First Daughter by Meredith Wilde and Mia Michelle. So this is about Charlotte and she is the president's daughter. Um, and she has a bunch of bodyguards that follow her around everywhere. She is actually also kind of like kind of like the wild child because her parents don't really pay attention to her anymore so she's trying to act out in any way she can to get that attention but she's always liked one of her bodyguards named Zane like she's had a huge crush on him and Zane has always been super attracted to her one day the dam finally breaks and they admit their feelings for one another and they get together <laughs> And it's about them trying to keep their relationship a secret because it is very forbidden because she's the president's daughter and he's just her bodyguard, you know? I just love characters who have been both longing for one another and then they finally reveal their feelings. I really like reading about that. So I really enjoy this one. I, I was very surprised that I would really like this one. So if you want a bodyguard romance, be sure to check this one out. Then I read A Dirty Rowdy Thing by Christina Lauren. This is book number two, a part of the Wild Season series. The first book was Sweet Filthy Boy. And so if you didn't know the plot of Sweet Filthy Boy, the beginning of it um there are three girlfriends and then three guy friends they don't know each other at the beginning of the book beginning of book one but they end up all meeting each other one night in vegas they wake up the next morning after meeting one another and they're all married to one of the other um so they're all three like paired together and so each book is about one of the couples and their romance and everything because the couple in book one they decided to stay married and to see and figure out if they could still be a couple um and then the other two got their marriage annulled immediately because <laughs> they got married drunkenly you know um and so this is about uh what's her name harlow and finn harlow and finn were one of the couples that got their marriage annulled finn is from canada and harlow i believe lives in california and this is just the romance of them connecting again and finally admitting their feelings for one another and that they actually might really like one another even though they probably shouldn't because of the distance because of their situation um but yeah i just felt like it was very gen a very generic like 
contemporary romance in my opinion, like nothing too special about it. There is a trigger warning in here for ha a loved one having cancer. So just be aware about that because Harlow is dealing with her mother. Her mother was just diagnosed with cancer. I will say I did like this book more than book one. Um, book one had like a jealousy plot line that I just did not like. Um, this one, the characters are kind of just having an inner battle with themselves and that's the reason why they're not really together. I will say though, I wish that Christina Lauren's books were more like this in like the steam level because like the steam level in here was good. Um, if you like people being tied up, yeah. <laughs> um, I wish their books were more like this. Like they're, they're, they're uh, books that they're now publishing. I haven't read their like recent three because I'm kind of like, I don't know if I want to, just because people have told me like, they're not really anything like these kinds of books, like they're old publications. I'm like, I really like these. So I don't know, I may just stick to their old work. Then I read Rogues Rush In by Tessa Dare and Christy Caldwell. This is a bind up of two novellas that they have written. So the one by Tessa Dare, this is a um, brother's best friend romance or best friend sister romance. Um, basically our heroine kind of like gets jilted at the altar and the hero's just like, well, I don't want you to be the gossip around society, so I'll marry you instead. And so they get married. And then the one by Christy Caldwell, Elizabeth, um, who was once married to her best friend named Crispin, um, but she ended up leaving him. Um, and you read about why and how. And I found both of these really entertaining. I really liked them. Very surprisingly, I wasn't expecting to like like these. Um, I'll just tell you the tropes in both of them. In the in the Tessa Dare novella, there are childhood best friends. There's a marriage of convenience. And there's a, the one bed trope. There is the best friend sibling trope. In the Christy Colwell novella, you have a character with glasses. There's a duke in here, a marriage in trouble. There's a character who loves books and they were childhood friends. I really enjoyed this one, I liked it, so I ended up giving it four stars. I then read Husky by Jessica Kane. I have really been liking her big boy romances. I I really like them, I do. Um, this one was really fun too. This one is about a heroine who is participating in Fashion Week um, and is one of the designers for Fashion Week in New York, but none of, none of the male models are kind of like inspiring her and so she like goes on a walk down the streets of New York to kind of like clear the air, get some air. And so she walks into this bar and she sees the bartender of this bar and immediately is attracted to him and wants to design some outfits for him. His name is Dawes. And so they spend all night, uh, they stay up all night designing outfits for him to wear for the fashion show ne the next day. And they might uh, get together in the process. It was very short very steamy, so entertaining. So I just gave it four stars. I then want to talk about a duet really fast. So I ended up reading Man in Charge by Laurel and Page. You would have noticed that I talked about this book in my TikTok romance book recommendations video. I think that was posted previously. And this book was recommended to me on TikTok because someone told me that a character in here has POTS, which is my chronic illness. And I thought it, would have been, I thought it was gonna be one of the main people in here or like one of the people in the couple um but no it's actually a heroine in this story her best friend has pots and I will say I loved the discussion of pots in this book it was everything I loved it I really recommend this book um if you've watched also my if you like this book or if you like this book then check out this book video I talked about how this book is reminds me a lot of Beautiful Bastard by Christina Lauren. It does uh this is an office romance our heroine works for this like company where they link big businesses with charities in hopes of the big businesses supporting certain charities. Um, so she's kind of like a charity consultant for big businesses. And so she ends up meeting this hero one night um, because she goes on the roof of this party and she ends up coming across him doing stuff with another girl on the roof and she ends up like watching and then long story short by some means she ends up going home with him that night um, and then she just thinks it's a one night stand and she she leaves. Um, she doesn't know who this guy is, doesn't know who he, doesn't know his name. And so then she goes to a meeting at this giant company that she's gonna work for, hopefully. And lo and behold, the CEO of this company, or one of the main guys of this company, is the guy that she was with that she saw on the roof. Um, <laughs> and so they are like getting it on in the office, y'all. They are. I really liked this one. It reminded me a lot of Beautiful Bastard. And plus the heroine's best friend, Tiana, or Tiana, I think it's Tiana, that's how you pronounce it. 
um, she has POTS, which is my chronic illness, and there's a lot of discussion about that. And the main charity the heroine in this book is trying to back up is the Dysautonomia Foundation, which is uh, POTS is a form of dysautonomia. And so there's a lot of discussion on here. The the character has a fainting episode on page, and like you, it talks a lot about um, this chronic illness. And I really appreciated that. And I even reached out to Lauren Lynn Page, and I was like. I want this heroine's like own book. I want it so bad. And she was like, I mean, never say never. So hopefully that happens one day. <laughs> um, and so then I ended up reading book two in the duet, which is Man in Love. Um, beware, book number one ends at a cliffhanger. It does. So I'm not gonna talk about Man in Love because everything in that book stems from the cliffhanger en ending of book one. Um, so I ended up reading this one. Um, I gave book one, what rating? I gave it four stars and I gave book two a 3.75 because I liked it a little bit less because the conflict in here, I didn't really like reading about all that much. Like it just kept, that's all the book was about was this conflict the whole time. And like, I was kind of over it. Um, so I just docked it like a 0.25 stars. <laughs> I then want to talk about this book, which is Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. Um, I really, really, really liked this one. This is about Macy and Elliot, and when they were kids, they were like best friends. This takes place years later. They have not seen each other in many, many, many years, but they come across each other one day in a coffee shop, and you realize that Macy and Elliot are not on speaking terms at all. They have not talked to each other in years, and you're kind of reading this book to figure out why. So this is like one of the ultimate friends to lovers, I feel like. It is a really, really, really good friends to lovers. Um, I love friends to lovers so much, so this was such a joy to read. So Macy and Elliot met when they were kids because they, um, her father ended up getting this vacation house, and that vacation house right, was right next door to Elliot's house, so whenever her, her and her father went on vacation, they'd see Elliot there. And so her father ends up making like this little reading nook in her room, which is so cool, and Elliot comes over all the time and they just read together in this reading nook and they become best flippin' friends and it slowly when they're teenagers like starts to turn into more like like they share her first her first kisses with him just things happen but then something happens between the two of them when um before they go off to college where she ends up just cutting off all ties with Elliot and does not talk to him for years and he has no idea why well he kind of knows why but he just, he doesn't know why his best friend would leave him. This is not a full five stars for me because I don't like romance books where the authors end up making one of the characters be in a relationship at the beginning of the book. At the beginning of the book, the heroine is in a relationship. She has a fiance. And I don't feel like that was needed at all. Like, it didn't need to be in the book at all. Also, the thing that happened as kids to, like, make Macy not like Elliot at that time and to hate him at that time... I felt like was kind of like brushed over and not really talked about all that much and she forgave him so easily once he explained himself and I would not, <laughs> no, no way, um, <laughs> for what he did. I felt like she forgave him way too easily from what happened. Um, but I overall really enjoyed this one so I just ended up giving it a four to five stars. Then I read The Fae King's Curse by Jamie Schlosser. This is a fantasy romance book where, um, the hero and the heroine ended up meeting when they were both 12 years old. The heroine lives on Earth, and the, heroine, the hero lives in a different realm. He lives in a fey realm. He's a fey prince at the beginning of the book. And so he gets sucked into this portal in her land, and they end up meeting. Um, and one day on Earth is equal to one year in this fey land. And so he's growing so fast day by day, um, but he's actually growing a year in his time, but she's seeing him every day. I know it's very confusing. You'll get it once you read the book. So they meet every single day. They become like best friends. And by the time she's 18, she like comes up to him one day and is like, hey, uh, this is gonna be the last time we see each other. I have to go off to college and I won't be seeing you for quite a long time. And he's like, no way, nah. -uh. And so he like basically <laughs> steals her and brings her into the portal of his land. And so he takes her to the Fae land. Um, and it's like their romance and everything. Um, of them like finally admitting their feelings for one another that they've had for all these years. There's a couple of other things that are on top of it. Our hero is actually blind. A curse was put on him and a bunch of other um, princes in this land to where like they are blind until they can find their mate. However, if you kiss somebody who is not your mate, you will be blind permanently for the rest of your life, no matter if you meet your mate later on in life. And so um, he loves the heroine and doesn't care about his mate. He just wants to be with her. Um, and she's kind of like, 
doesn't want to one day be replaced by somebody so she's kind of like distancing herself from him a little bit but dang this romance is so good I ended up giving it a 4.5 out of 5 stars if you loved book 2 in the Akatar trilogy I really recommend that you read this book y'all it gave me the same vibes as a certain a certain place in book 2 I'm not gonna talk about it because some people haven't read it. <laughs> I just love this love story. I love this couple. I love this world. So I am very much looking forward to reading the rest of the series in July. Lastly, my favorite book that I read in June was not a romance book. It was a young adult book and it is Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I have a whole entire review of this book um, on my channel, so I'm not going to talk about it all that much, but this is a fantasy romance book dealing with secret libraries and a quest and a surprisingly a murder mystery plot that I loved because I really like murder mystery plot lines where like the characters already know who like the murderer or the killer or the person who committed the crime is but the whole book is about them trying to out them or like seek justice and there you know who the who the killer is basically and so I liked that in here um there's a lot of witchcraft or a lot of magic and demons and oh my gosh I loved this so much five flippin stars from me go check out my review if you haven't yet the beginning is spoiler free and then I go into my spoilery thoughts so there you have it those are all 19 books that I ended up reading in June please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching I will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all